The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The wine grape harvest has begun here in Monterey County. It began on August 29th a couple of weeks later than average due to cool temperatures during the summer. So it is the perfect time for this parable of the workers in the vineyard. In the parable, it must be a very rich harvest, or it must be done quickly, or both, because the landowner keeps going out to the marketplace to hire more workers. Early morning, 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and then 5 p.m., and then when evening came, I mean, how long was this workday anyway? (laughs) When evening came, the manager lined up the folks to be paid, and no matter how long they worked, each person received the same pay. And to add insult to injury, those who arrived last got paid first. Not fair, right? Of course not, because this is no ordinary vineyard. It is God's, and God is generous. But the complaint of those who had been there working in the hot sun all day was not about the landowner's generosity. It was that the reward system didn't work like they expected it to. We're okay with God being generous to everyone as long as God is more generous to us. (laughs) The insiders those who've been around a while. It's not in our reading for today, but Peter had just asked Jesus, look, we left everything and followed you. What will we have? And Jesus tells this parable. Where the worker's complaint was, you have made them equal to us. I have a t-shirt that says, equal rights for others doesn't mean fewer rights for you. It's not pie. (laughs) The landowner didn't take anything away from the laborers who were there all day. Paying the latecomers the same amount did not mean those who came early got less. But those laborers were angry that they didn't get more than they had been promised. 
In our translation, the landowner asks, are you envious because I am generous? But in the Greek, the first part of this question actually is, is your eye evil? Are you looking at this situation through the lens of God's reign or through the lens of the kingdoms of this world? Looking through the lens of this world, we might be able to see how the landowner seems unfair to those workers who came early. But let's take a look through the lens of God's reign. The parable makes it sound all gentle and nice. The landowner going to town repeatedly to find workers who will be paid whatever is right, a daily wage, and everyone gets paid the same. That sounds like God, right? until you think about what is really happening. Who are these workers and why are they available to be hired for a day or half a day or an hour? They're not landowners. They're not managers. They don't have a steady job. They work only when someone hires them. They are day laborers and they are experiencing real economic terror in their lives. They're fighting for survival. One of the commentaries I read this week asked the question, do you know who picks the grapes for your communion wine? So I looked around to see what grape pickers are paid here in Monterey County, even though our communion wine doesn't come from here probably. It's advertised as anywhere between minimum wage, $15.50 an hour, up to $23 an hour. Of course, it's temporary, seasonal work, with 10-plus hour days and weekends, because when the grapes are ripe, they need to be picked right away. You work when you're needed, and you don't work when you're not. Now, you may be lucky enough to be hired on a crew that harvests throughout the area, so you maybe have work for a couple of months. And then what? If you're lucky to piece together enough of these kinds of gigs around the county and you're able to work 40 hours a week at minimum wage for 50 weeks, you might make $31,000 a year, which is $2,583 a month. Now they say that you should spend about a third of your income on rent, which would be $861 right? Maybe you're lucky enough to live with a couple of other people who also are lucky enough to have work. And you could afford the average rent in Monterey County, which is about $1,850 a month. If a landowner would rent to you without a guarantee of income, and if you could pay the security deposit. This is why I say that the laborers in this parable are fighting for survival. And many people in our own county today are in this same fight. In the parable, the early birds are grumbling that the landowner is unfair because he didn't pay them more than the early arrivals. They certainly could use the extra cash, all of them. They're right that the landowner is unfair, but they are wrong about how. If you're looking through the lens of God's reign, same pay for different work is not the problem. The problem is that the system is exploitative of the workers. Is this really what the kingdom of heaven is like? Do we think that it is God's dream for some people to own vast amounts of the earth and pay others as little as possible to till it and keep it and harvest it? In the second creation story, God plants a beautiful garden full of every good thing and creates humans to till and keep it. Last week, I talked about the Jubilee year, the year of the Lord's favor, a time to remember that we are but tenants on God's land. Jubilee is commanded so that humans, animals, and all creation can rest and reset. The Hebrew prophets imagine God's dream as humanity living in harmony with God, with each other, and creation. 
Swords will be beaten into plowshares, and everyone will sit under their own vines and their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. That's the prophet Micah. This is the same dream that fuels Jesus' ministry. Jesus came to inaugurate God's reign, so why is it still so far away? One reason is that the church has spiritualized the teachings of Jesus so that they do not present a threat to the political and economic powers of our times. The gospel has been sold as good news to the poor. You may never be rich. You may suffer in this life, but you'll be rewarded in heaven after you die. And the gospel has also been sold as good news to the rich. However short you fall in demonstrating your love for God and neighbor in concrete ways, you'll be forgiven. Dietrich Bonhoeffer calls this cheap grace. Just before Jesus tells this parable, he has encountered the one we usually refer to as the rich young ruler. He asked Jesus what he needs to do to earn eternal life the one thing he cannot buy with all of his wealth. Jesus tells him he needs to keep the commandments, and the man says he does. But does he? Does he love God and love his neighbor? He thinks he does. But Jesus tells him very plainly what that means. You've got to do one more thing. Sell all your possessions Give the money to the poor and follow me. And the rich one went away grieving. He wanted eternal life, but he also wanted all of his stuff. Do we really want to be workers in God's vineyard, equal with everyone else in God's eyes, and content with our daily bread? This is a serious question and one that I struggle with daily. I have not sold all my possessions and given the money to the poor. I have not sold half my possessions or a quarter. I stand up here and I preach that Exodus is for everyone, but I enjoy the privileges I experience in the unjust systems of the world. I know that however free and fulfilled I feel, I am not experiencing the fullness of God's true freedom and abundant life unless the people and the world around me are also experiencing it. As long as one of us is hurting, we're all hurting. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I feel a little bit like my favorite disciple, Peter. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. The image that came to me this week, literally, was a spider web. I was walking along and nearly stepped right into one that was strung between a tree and a truck, right in my face. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's like that. (laughs) It got me thinking about how creation is a web. God spins that web with love. Like a spider web, it can resist forces that appear to be much stronger than itself. It is flexible and resilient. And if a strand is broken, it can be restrung. All of us, all creation, are part of this web. Are we content because our little bit seems intact? Or are we looking for the weak and broken spots around us and joining with God to strengthen what is weak and repair what is broken? This week, let's be mindful about the web of creation and our spot in it. Let's wonder about how the abundance we enjoy is out of balance with other scarcity and how that threatens the integrity of the web. We can begin right now by considering our communion bread and wine and wondering about everything that makes it possible for us to have those on our table. The bounty of the earth, the labor of the people who till and keep it, 
those who harvest and process and package and distribute. Let us pray for the welfare of all the people and the gifts of the earth that make it possible for us to celebrate this feast. And let's look for ways to join our prayers with concrete action to strengthen and repair that which is weak and broken so that God's will can be done on earth. Amen.